The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. An epiphany is an event that gives sudden and full understanding so powerful and complete that in an instant the past and the future are reinterpreted in its radiance and the present takes on a brilliant importance. Isn't that what we're talking about today? I threw that at you, but I really like that, so let me read it again. An epiphany is an event that gives sudden and full understanding, so powerful and complete, that in an instant, the past and the future are reinterpreted in its radiance, and the present takes on a brilliant importance. So the epiphany that we are talking about today is what? That Jesus is born and that Jesus was born as the king. This epiphany or this manifestation or this revelation or this new understanding, you pick the word, is that Jesus was born as the king for all people. This was not just a local event, it was a global event with ramifications that rippled through the whole world, drawing people from far away places to the birthplace of Jesus, shown to them by the star. I think that's pretty cool. And it helps complete the Christmas story. If you were here on Christmas Day, you heard me talk about this three-part Christmas story. We get one part from Luke, which talks about the Virgin Mary, the shepherds, the angels, and no room in the inn. We get one part from John, where in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. And now this third part from Matthew, with the threats from King Herod, the Magi from the East, the gifts, and the star. Put all three of those together and you have your picture-perfect Christmas pageant, but take each of them on their own and we begin to experience epiphanies that tell us more and more about this Christ child. Stick around for the coming weeks these next Sundays after Epiphany, and we'll get more Epiphanies 
from Jesus' experience of his baptism and his miracles, like changing water into wine. And as I said in this explanation at the beginning, those experiences change us. Those epiphanies reinterpret our past and our future, and they change who we are in this very instant. If we need to think about it in a different way, think about those epiphanies that we have around the new year. We feel as though when that clock strikes 12 midnight or when that ball reaches the bottom of its descent, something changes. Or if you're like me and you're asleep at 10.30 that night, things change somewhere around New Year's. But there's this moment where we get to reflect on how and why we've lived our lives over the past year. And we consider how and why we will live our lives in the coming year. And that moment is our own little epiphany. We have the chance to reinterpret the past and the future and make a change in ourselves there in the present. And I think that's where those resolutions come from. Our interpretations of the past, you know, the past year, make us want to reinterpret the future this coming year. And in that moment when we realize it, those things, we are changed. So if we turn back to the Magi, or the kings, or the wise men as we call them, their epiphany was seeing that the star had stopped and finally encountering the Christ child. That whole situation drew them away from their homelands for this long journey into the unknown. Encountering that Christ child made them fall to their knees in adoration and in desire to worship this new king. And it changed their future didn't it? They had plans for how they were going to return home, but in their encounter with this child and in the dream that brought them the warnings and in their new understanding of King Herod's intentions, those things told them to take a different path. That could certainly be seen, of course, as just a simple change in plans, but we could also say that it changed the entire direction of their way into the future. Shouldn't encountering the Christ child do that to all of us? Our futures should be completely new and different because Christ was born into this world. That's what the Christmas story does to us. That's why this epiphany that we celebrate comes at the end of the 12 days of Christmas. This entire season and celebration changes the way we see things, and it sends us out at the end of this time on a brand new path. At least that's the hope. That's our hope with New Year's resolutions. That's our hope in this life of faith. You know, each time we come out of worship, each time we have a powerful faith experience, each time we have one of those major mountaintop experiences, we are changed. And we walk away thinking that we're going to live in a new way. But we all know living in that new way is hard. And we often fall back into the way that things have always been. Which is why we get the Christmas story year after year. Which is why we have the New Year's experience again and again, year after year. We get to try again. We get to keep working on this intentional new path forward. So, I have a proposal for this year. I've heard a lot of people talk about Star Wars recently. You know who you are. Well, how about this epiphany? This day, we talk about Star Words. W-O-R-D-S. Star Words. You all, hopefully, have received a star, right? Let's see them. Let's see them. Okay, all right, got some stars. As you can see, it's currently blank. I would like for each of you, at some point in the near future, to think of a word and write that word onto the star. And I want that word to change your future. You could think of it as a New Year's resolution, but it's probably better for you to think of it as your epiphany. 
which is why it's on a star. Spend the coming days and weeks and months thinking about that word. Incorporate it into your prayer life, into your devotional life, into your faith life, into your everyday life. For example, for myself, I've had a lot of words floating around as possibilities, but I've landed personally on the word hospitality. So what might the word hospitality look like for me this year? So I'm going to be asking myself many questions. You know, how can I show hospitality to family and friends? Making invitations to meals, inviting people into our home, reaching out to those who I've been thinking about. How might I show hospitality to those I don't know? How might I be better connected or get to know those who are different from me? How have I been shown hospitality? How does God show hospitality in the scriptures? How might my prayers that focus on hospitality open me to new possibilities or opportunities this coming year? I know it could be one more thing that just gets dropped fairly quickly, but it could be a way for me to stay focused. It's just one word. And I can use it to focus on what's important and let go of what's not important. So again, hospitality, that's my word. It's not your word. <laughs> it can be if you want, but I want to leave that part open to you. Your word could be practice, mercy, forgiveness, opportunity, rest, pleasure, Grace, compassion, kindness, anything, something that may push you a little bit. It's between you and God. But if that gift of open-endedness is too vague for you, during communion, the ushers will be holding these baskets here in the front when you return your cups, and they have pieces of paper in them, and each piece of paper has a word. Those words are folded and hidden, so don't go rifling through them. Don't trade with your neighbor when you get home or when you're sitting down in the pew. Just take the word, think of it as being divinely given to you, and see what that word might say to you this year, and write it on your star. What do you think? Okay. I hope that your star word will point you star word. See what I did? <laughs> Star word. I hope it can give you some intentionality and focus for what can come in the future. Because, like I said, shouldn't the star change us? When we see that star, can't we be like the magi who become so overjoyed and who fall to their knees in homage and worship and who share gifts of themselves and who find a new way forward. I mean, that is truly the gift of the star and that is truly the gift of an epiphany. So, Happy New Year. Amen.